हॅलो ऑल माय सेल्फ प्रोफेसर सचिन करचे फ्रॉम मराठवाडा मित्रमंडळ कॉलेज ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग कर्वेनगर पुणे आय वुड लाईक टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर दिस प्रेझेंटेशन विच इज अंडर इंटरनॅशनल एफ डी पी ऑन एन्व्हायरमेंटल अँड सस्टेनेबिलिटी विच इज नोन ॲज ऑनलाईन एज्युकेशन फॉर बेटर वर्ल्ड अँड विच इज ऑर्गनाइज बाय डी वाय पाटील कॉलेज ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग अकोर्डी न माय टॉपिक fourth week presentation will be case study of green building and different is standards related to green concept or greening of the building now these are some of the details of my first week video uh, the video contents in brief are contribution of uh, regular buildings in construction a uh, regular building construction to increase how they increase the carbon footprints then study of green buildings different rating systems used in green green building and brief introduction of these rating systems in the second week video i have covered contribution of the building towards degradation of the environment how buildings contribute to degrade the environment then what is the role of green building particularly as a remedial measure for this particular thing then uh, which are the standards right standards uh, is nothing but the rating systems uh, which are lead and griha indian systems and then comparison between lead system and griha system now these are some of my video outcomes uh buildings have a big impact on environment as we all know that poorly constructed poorly designed buildings contribute more towards the uh degradation of the environment whereas green building promotes efficient use of all the resources all the energy then it reduces bad impacts of normal building on the environment and it uh, preserves precious natural uh resources and which improves the quality of the life uh, these are the list uh, it is a list of different iso standards which which are related to green uh, building now as we know that green building is nothing but the building where we use the different technology different thing which promotes green technology okay so uh, uh, for example if you are using uh, water uh, in normal building and using water in green building so in green building we use very less water we use the water efficiently right for as far as energy is concern so we uh, preserve energy we use uh, less energy less electricity so uh, as far as materials are concern we use eco friendly materials the materials which has very less or no impact bad impact on the environment so different is codes or uh, we can say is standards uh, related to these things are some of them are listed here so very first is iso 21930 uh, 2017 is the edition which which promotes sustainability in the building and other civil engineering works then iso 14000 we know that it is mainly related to the environment management and which provides guideline for establishing good practices for combating land degradation and desertification then iso uh, 14001 which which uh, deals with environmental management systems uh, requirements with the guidance for use which covers overall frameworks audits communications labeling life cycle assessment and uh, the methods to mitigate and adapt to the climate change similarly uh, these are another uh, iso that is another standards which deals with different thing uh, i like to mention uh, some of them uh, like this last one iso 15392 which which mainly deals with sustainability in the building construction okay next thing is carbon footprint now we know better 
that what is carbon footprint it is nothing but the amount of carbon emitted carbon dioxide emitted by any of your activity right knowingly and unknowingly we all used to emit um, we can say uh, different greenhouse gases one of them uh, is co2 which is we, we can say more prominent which has very bad impact on what you can say uh, nature or we can say environment right which which contributes to global warming now uh, technically speaking carbon footprint is nothing but amount of co2 emissions associated with all the activities of a person or other entity that is building uh, uh, any country any building anything etc it includes direct emission such as though that results from fossil fuel combustion in manufacturing heating transportation as well as emissions required to produce an electricity associated with goods and services consumed in addition to carbon footprint concept also often includes the emission of other greenhouse gases such as methane nitrous oxide and chlorofluorocarbons which are briefly called as cfcs now we know that these are the uh, other uh, contributors to what we can say global warming or increasing carbon footprint but as we discussed earlier co2 is a main contributor that's why it is called as carbon footprint though it related it is related with the another <coughs> components also like methane uh, nitrous uh, oxides or uh, cfcs now let's have a look at method of calculation now in calculating we need to multiply use of input by emission factor to calculate each footprint okay so uh, all use inputs are per individual and include things like fuel use distance calorie consumption and expend expenditure this is the method how uh, we use to calculate carbon footprint now let's see how to calculate with this particular uh, example of our housing right to calculate our housing footprint we need to work out our personal share of home uh, uh, home energy use water use and waste disposal this means collecting figures for your home's annual energy water usage waste uh, etc and dividing it by the number of people in your home to get your individual share right having gathered this information we can then multiply our personal usage by emission factor now this is very important which is briefly called as ef you can see ef capital ef which is called as emission factor which is used which can be used to calculate our home footprint now this calculation will be like this now if you want to calculate our energy share that is uh, we know that everybody uses the energy electricity right so as far as uh, one single person is concerned we also uh, calculate in that case the carbon footprint now how to calculate this the usage in kwh per year when it is multiplied by ef which is in kg uh, co2 emission per kwh which gives you emission of that co2 co2 emission uh, in kg per year similarly we can calculate it for natural gas fuels lpg waste and water use for water use to calculate it uh, uh, for the personal use we can uh, put the quantity of the liters water uh, per day we are using multiply by 365 that is years in a day then ef so will gives you uh, co2 emission in kg per year of an individual person similarly we know that uh, we used to travel by uh, maybe sometimes our with our personal vehicle private vehicle then sometimes bus metro railway taxi so we can calculate a uh, carbon emission in these particular cases for example if you take example of vehicles you can put the distance uh, traveled 
in kilometers per year again it divided by um, we can say ef so we'll get the emissions per year then similarly for food now we know uh, it's very hard to believe that every every everything that we eat uh, from right from its uh, what we can say production when and uh, the final stage that is when it reaches to us so in between that particular product consumes lot of energy so with the calculation of this particular energy we can calculate the uh, what we can co2 consumed uh, per unit of the particular food so these are the some of the uh, foods uh, mentioned here with the uh, calculation of co2 emission which contains fruits oil snacks drinks different dairy products uh, then meat okay so using this particular formula as we have discussed earlier uh, we can calculate the per capita uh, what we can say um, <coughs> co2 emitted with the intake of the particular food now as we know that building is composed of many materials which are called as different building materials no now in green building uh, the plan is to use the material which has very less impact on the particular environment so to know or to use the uh, eco friendly materials one should know the contribution of conventional or regular uh, what we can say materials to the uh, emission of greenhouse gases so if you take example of conventional concrete it consumes 0.95 mj per kg so this is the energy consumed by concrete whereas it emits um, per kg it is quantity again in per kg 0.13 kg of co2 emission <clears throat> can we believe this so this is what we can say <clears throat> sorry this is the what you can say amount of co2 emitted by 1 kg of concrete along with the energy consumed so for uh, <clears throat> in case of bricks 3.0 is the consumption and 0.22 is the emission in case of wood 8.5 is consumption and 0.46 kg per kg is the co2 emission so we can uh, list out this particular materials where we can see virgin aluminum takes lot of energy and which contributes very 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 much into the emission of carbon dioxide so it's our duty not to use virgin aluminium in your building nowadays aluminium uh, use of aluminium has increased now uh, now we know that instead of using any other uh, um, uh, materials we are we are just randomly using aluminiums for the making of uh, doors windows partitions so we should stop that reason is 11.46 is we can say per kg co2 emitted by virgin aluminum into the atmosphere so our aim is reducing use of this particular conventional materials and use of green materials eco friendly materials in the building so automatically when you use the eco friendly materials your building will be green building so this is our aim now uh, these are some of the things that we have mentioned or discussed earlier so i will not go in uh, deep inside this so we know this is the fact so i have kept this side uh, slide only um, for the connection purpose so it will only act as a connecting uh, bridge because these things i have already covered in my first two videos so we know that uh, why to green the building the answer is buildings are the major contributors to the depletion of the environment that's why uh, we are going to uh, means focus on greening of the building it uses more than 50% of the resources total resources and contribute again to the uh, uh, means uh, polluting in polluting environment 
again in more than 50 percent so this is these are the some facts which are taken from a uh, griha manual that it uses 40 percent of global energy 42 percent of global water and 50 percent of raw materials it contributes 50 percent of world's air pollution 42 greenhouse emission 50 percent water pollution 48 percent of solid waste and 50 percent of cfc's can we believe this it contributes to 50 percent almost half Okay, so no transportation, no fossil fuel, uh, fossil uh, burning of fossil fuel. It just construction of building, which contributing to the depletion of the environment or degradation of the environment. Now, this is these are the different benefits of the building that we can save the energy. <coughs> now. Uh, in second video I also briefly introduced with the Griha system and lead system okay so which these are the evaluation st stages of the uh, Griha which is developed by Terry right pre-construction stage planning and construction stage and operation and maintenance okay so greening of your building starts right from the construction stage pre-construction okay right from surveying to the maintenance then these are the features of uh, lead india and these are the different uh, ca categories in which it grades the building sustainable site water efficiency energy and atmosphere material and resources indoor environmental quality and innovation and design now uh, based on these six factors we are going to analyze our case study that is yamuna building now these are the different steps of the certification and now we'll start with the uh, case study of Yamuna. Now Yamuna is a building name of the very famous group that is Kirloskar Brothers. Uh, it is nothing but the corporate office of Kirloskar Brothers which is situated in Baner, Pune and it has got lead platinum build uh, grade, lead platinum grade which is the topmost uh, what we can say uh, rating <clears throat> which this building has achieved now uh, we'll see the first page uh, phase phase uh, i must say of any uh, construction of any building is nothing but the surveying or preparation of the site now the preparation uh, greening of the building as we have discussed starts from what we can say preparation of the site preparation of the site now <clears throat> first topic uh, we must uh, we must take care of that is we must stop erosion of the soil and sedimentation now how to uh, how to uh, means uh, prevent this soil erosion so in emuna they have used different systems like use of sedimentation trap where we can uh, trap the sedimentation we can trap the soil uh, stabilized uh, entrance permanent compound wall now before starting the construction they have constructed the permanent compound wall so as to prevent the soil erosion and sedimentation then next is a uh, major followed post construction construction now after construction they have used uh, geotextile fabric in terrace gardens, use of rainwater harvesting pits, planting of shrubs, and periodic maintenance. Now, these are the very important uh, steps with which we can um, prevent sedimentation and erosion. Now, this is how they have uh, prevented this thing construction of compound wall we can see the compound wall as well as the sedimentation trap these uh, techniques technologies are used just to prevent erosion erosion of the soil erosion of the ground then uh, rain water uh, recharge pit we know that uh, very few uh, water is available for drinking and farming purpose that we can uh, call it as a fresh water so it is i think in point 0.7 or something so rest of the water is saline water or in the form of glacier so we uh, it's our duty to conserve the water right don't let wa water flow into the river and uh, to reach into the oceans so 
we must recharge the ground water so this is the technique uh, which is used to recharge the bore wells in the campus now the campus has four to five bore wells and which uh, has <coughs> uh, installed with this type of uh, recharge pits with which the re pits are uh, recharged and rain water is harvested now this is storm water management they have used this uh, type of blocks which allows uh, the water to percolate inside the ground and which becomes finally part of the ground water uh, inter interlocking blocks are also used for the same purpose now if you use co concrete surface uh, water just storm water just flow on it and there is no percolation of the water and it finally meets to the ocean right so uh, conservation of water by constructing this type of uh, interlocking uh, blocks is very important so as to uh, means ensure the percolation of the water then <coughs> uh, to reduce pollution they have used they using the people in the building uh, or we can say the employees of uh, kilostro brothers they using continuously public uh, transportation they are using alternative alternative fuels they are uh, means doing carpool they are parking as per local areas and this is this is to keep the footprints minimum then water conservation as we have discussed earlier they have used uh, storm water uh, with the help of storm water management uh, the water bore wells are recharged and which enables uh, the gardening or maintenance of uh, 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 landscape in a better way uh, they have they, 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 there are uh, just as we have discussed four rainwater harvesting pits which are being recharged they use grass paver uh, pavers for parking area to improve perviousness a uh, use of more interlocking paver blocks and use of more uh, landscape or the open area so as to uh, facilitate the percolation of the water that we have discussed earlier then uh, another important part is heat island effect now we know that what is heat island effect it is just defined as we know that uh, the temperature of the city or temperature of the building as we are taking uh, the case study of a building so we can say that temperature of the building is always at some higher level than the surrounding if you consider a pune city as a whole uh, temperature of the city is more than the su surrounding now this is some uh, means uh, this is called as a heat island effect now uh, to reduce heat island effect now what is impact of heat island effect now this is very important question that what is impact of heat island effect now uh, i'd like to mention that heat island effect uh, means <clears throat> increase the temperature of your building and once your building get heated automatically usage of the energy that is electricity increases so immediately uh, we used to use uh, artificial ventilation like ac like uh, fans coolers etc so it contributes to uh, what we can say excess use of energy electricity then the storm water from these particular buildings are uh, uh, flows is it is flows uh, with some increased temperature and when when it mixes uh, to the water bodies nearby it it disturbs the, what you can say ecosystem of that particular uh, river which is called as a uh, another effect of heat island effect now <clears throat> using china mosaic tiles on the terraces and use of canopies right which which enables us to keep the temperature of your building at low level now these are the china mosaic tiles used on the terrace so as to reflect the uh, sun rays and so as to keep uh, keep the temperature of the building as low as possible these are the canopies <coughs> sorry now optimum use of water that is water con con uh, conservation is very important as we know that um, they used um, 
water treatment plants we can sewage treatment plants okay and that water treated water sewage uh, uh, the water effluent after treating the sewage it it is used for gardening purpose so they have eliminated uh, 100% usage of fresh water good water potable water for landscaping purpose so sewage treated sewage water is used for landscaping then uh, for the uh, uh greater efficiency they also use drip irrigation sprinkler uh, systems irrigations where whenever uh, and wherever possible <clears throat> again they have used uh, sensor operated taps and uh, different uh, what we can say uh, plumbing fixtures these are the uh, canopies installed and <coughs> the china mosaic tiles used on the terrace the next part is conservation of energy now conservation of energy is also uh, important part this can be achieved by using green roof use of double glazed units using fabric canopies and use using day lightning and occupancy sensors again use of uh, renewable source of energy they have installed solar photovoltaic systems on the terrace which generates around 2.5 of the total energy which building uses these are the electricity consumption analysis of the yamuna which we can say total units are very much less than the design or desired units this is a study of 6 month then again uh, they have observed very much uh, what we can say uh, uh, conservation of the water and they have reduced the usage of water the next important part is reduce reuse and recycle now to reduce the demand of virgin materials and to reduce the waste KBL has used more than five percent of the total of the materials, uh, which are salvaged, refurbished, and reused. They have used the material from their previous buildings. Many of the furniture in Yamuna is, we can say, just refurnished, refurbished, uh, which which were previously at some another place. So brick bat and china mosaic from demolished buildings of. Uh, the previous the previous office and uh, which is used for waterproofing of the terrace they have used antique furnitures the storage units sofas uh, are reused <clears throat> and waste super superis blocks are used for landscaping of the terrace okay so many of the material uh, they have uh, used from their previous offices Uh, which ensures reduce reduced uh, use of virgin materials by twenty percent. Again, they have used <coughs> regional materials. Around eighty percent of the materials used were regional. Uh, that is within the radius of eight hundred. Uh, sorry, it's not kilometer. It's meter. Eight hundred meter. Uh, so as to reduce the uh, transportation. Then they have used certified uh, wood. for the better performance then this is how uh, the brick bat that is bricks are previously used bricks are used here and this is the furniture which is refurbished from the previous office these are the different uh, uh, th this these are the fsc certified flooring which is used to prepare this badminton court and uh, another furniture <clears throat> illumination by natural light that is which we can say day lighting so as to reduce use of electricity this is task lighting so uh, <clears throat> if you are not at your place you can switch off your light that is called as a task lighting and these are the credits gain or the points earned by uh, the yamuna so as to get lead platinum grating now uh, concluding this uh, i would like to mention that 
ग्रीन बिल्डिंग और ग्रीन रेटिंग एंश्योर्ड इन ए यमुना बिल्डिंग लॉट ऑफ वॉट वी कैन से सेव्ड वाटर सेव्ड एनर्जी एंड यूज ऑफ एफिशेंटली यूज ऑफ डिफरेंट मटेरियल्स विच एंश्योर्स इंक्रीज वॉट वी कैन से रेपुटेशन ऑफ किर्लोस्कर ब्रदर्स Uh, with this, I would like to thank you. Thank you.